Good evening, demons and demonesses. Just me, uh, chilling out here with my daughter, who's like... I guess you can see her right now. She's laying on my back. So I uh, just decided to, you know, retire to my quarters and, like, just watch a few things on my computer. But then again, I'm like, you know what? I'm a little bored. You can only watch so many news reports and so many heavy metal music videos before you get tired. So all of a sudden, you know what? Might as well try a little bit of gaming. Um, I just brought a couple of new games not too long ago. Um, one of them was called Gene Forge. Now, I played this game when I was a kid. I think I was like, I think it was like in middle school. Um, another one of my classmates would, um, had introduced the game to me. And um, you can literally buy, you can't really buy the game singly. You, if you buy the game, you literally have to buy every game in the series. Now, there's five games for only like $30. So that's like, what, $6 a game? So that, that's actually not bad, buying six games are of $30. And these aren't just like simple little games, these are very long RPG games, about 50 hours in gameplay each, so... And it all depends on how you play the game, determine, that determines how the game is supposed to end. So I'm gonna, ha I'm gonna try and have fun with this, um, stream this with you guys. Actually, no, I'm just going to release this in parts. I'm sorry, I look like shit right now. Um, <laughs> like I said, it's been a very rough day. I'm still high on caffeine right now, so... Alright, uh, let's get through this bloody thing. Okay, so this is the... What the screen looks like. See all the creations roaming around. So this is, pretty, this is a pretty good game. I want to re review the credits now. Now, if you guys want to check out the you know the credits on who made this game, uh, I'll let you guys do that another time. So, just going to start the game. Let's see. What do I want to be? See, there's three classes here. You got the shaper, you have the guardian, and you have the agent, who's kind of like an assassin. Uh, these are actually pretty good characters right now, but. Um, I'm not sure who I want to be, I know. Would be better, you know, to play as the Shaper because, you know... Um... Gosh... Uh, should I play as the Shaper the Guardian? I know the Agent is also pretty good, but... I usually... Uh, when I play this game, I usually only play as, like, either the Shaper or the Guardian, so, um... on shaping skills, because he has strong shaping skills, but this one has strong. I'm going to play as the... Uh, fuck, I don't know. I'm going to play as the shaper, fuck it. One to that. To that. To that. Uh, gosh, I only got six points left. Hmm. This is going to be a hard one. Well, I do want to have strong leadership skills, because that's going to come in handy with all the stuff that's going on in this game. So is that one as well, so, um... Healing, that's also another thing that's... Yeah, just gonna do healing, leadership, and mechanics. See where that leads me. The Shapers are the oldest, most respective, most secretive, and most powerful of the magical sects. The Shapers have the power to magically create life. The Shapers can make new life forms from nothing but raw materials and pure magic. They can mode this life to serve their purpose, be it light housework or major warfare. The Shapers guard the secrets of the powers very closely. To learn their techniques without permission is a court of speedy death at the hands of a guardian in the day or an agent in the night. After years of work, study, and testing, you have finally been accepted into the Shapers. You will spend your life advancing their will and delving into their secrets and powers. <clears throat> However, none of those secrets have been shared with you yet. First, you must complete your apprenticeship. 
you must spend five years out in a shaper colony on a remote island, watching their very work and aiding their research. After a brief welcoming ceremony and a last night's celebration, you don your traditional garments and board your craft to the remote islands. This journey is two weeks long. You travel on a living craft, a specially modified dryak, which will carry you through rough seas to your destination. After a week's journey, you pass close to a small chain of islands. You consult your chart and find that one of them is named Sushi Island. It's named on your chart as Bard. Shapers declare places barred for a variety of reasons. Experiments gone wrong, dangerous accidents, valuable secrets, whatever the reason, any outsider in a barred place is punished with instant death. Curious, you stand at the edge of your craft, watching Sushia Island, wondering what secrets lie there. As you watch, you fail to notice the sailing ship dead ahead of you, off the southeast coast of the island. Your craft carries out an alarm, alerting you to the danger. It is a strange ship of a style you have never seen before. That is why you don't recognize the weapon on its prow. It fires a long spear at your craft. The razor-sharp bo razor boat stripes your dryak in the neck. It roars in anger and breathes a bolt of fire at your attacker. It strikes the sails, which sets them alight. The battle takes only seconds. Your living craft founders, mortally wounded, dropping you into the water. Your goods and tools sink into the depths. You attempt to swim to surface. You barely notice that the ship which attacked you is, fl is aflame and having extreme difficulty. Your whole being is consumed with the struggle to reach the shore, but your strength is not enough. You start to sink, but with one last effort, your living craft assists you, bleeding from its neck, rapidly dying. It manages to lift you with its head and carry you to a crumbling dock. Then it dies. It sinks away. You are left alone, abandoned on this forbidden shore. You are alone on Susha Island. Welcome to Geneforge. These early sections are a tutorial which will help you get started. Select your character by select your character by clicking on it. Click on a spot on the ground to walk there. Hmm. You stagger off the dock, weakened to the point of collapse by your desperate swim here. After a few minutes, you manage to regain enough of your senses to look around. You were on the south coast of the island you saw before your craft was slain. However, apart from the fact that this isle was declared barred by your people, you know nothing about it. The structures around you are ruined and crumbling. You would guess that they have been abandoned for at least a century, probably two. Islands are generally barred because of a failed experiment and the presence of horrible rogue creatures. Fortunately, except for the lapping of the waves in the base of the docks, all is quiet. If you are going to be devoured, it won't be soon. However, you are still stranded here and desperately weak as well. Fortunately, the beach stretches off to the east. Maybe there is something useful there. Get comfortable with moving your character around by heading down to the right. You can also select your character by drawing a box around it, move the cursor onto the terrain, hold the mouse button down, and move the cursor to make the selection box. Okay, I got it selected. Okay, so why isn't it scrolling? Oh, that's why it doesn't auto scroll. That's Trash. Empty. More trash. Let's see what's going on here. Try moving the cursor to the edge of the screen. Notice how the view shifts. This is how you look around. You can also change the view by clicking on the auto map. Ah, so it does kind of auto screw. 
currently walking east. There's a tunnel to the north, built into the side of the hill. Your guess is that it's a storeroom or warehouse. Usually one is placed near the docks of a settlement. After all these years, most of the goods inside are probably useless. You might be able to scatter into something useful, though. Let's see what's inside of here. Let's get going an item, which looks like a hand. A window will come up depicting all nearby items. Click on the items you want to put. Um, you want to put them into your inventory. Be sure to get the tunic on the nearby table. Hmm. Alright, that's the crap. Okay. Damn, I don't know. I don't know how I did that. Okay. Hmm, that's weird. Hmm. I don't I honestly don't know how to oh, inventory and items. Okay, let's see if that works. That's good, no. There we go. The tunic. What's down here? More baskets. Ah, javelins. Good, those are good weapons. More bones. Bowls and spoons. Nothing of value. Nothing too much of value, I should say. Oh, it's, it's in here. Inside this small chamber, you find seven cylindro containers. They look like canisters, each with a little over a foot high. The sides are made of thick, carefully blown glass. Most of them have been broken, and the contents are long gone. One of them, however, is still intact. Inside, you see a glowing fluid. It swirls and moves about, seemingly under its own power. It looks like it is, in its own way, alive. It probably is. You have never seen anything like this before, but you have seen similar object. The shapers can contain fluids filled with life energy, which heal or energize those in need. This must be something like that. There is a small section of fragile glass at the top. You break it, and with the palm of your hands, the substance will come forth and energize you. In your weakened state, it seems hard to resist. Click on it, canister, to use it. Okay, let's see what's inside. Hmm. All right. There is an office to the west. The shelves on the wall have nothing on them but dust. The box in the corner, however, might contain something useful. I guess I picked up 12 coins, a cloak, the cloak on, oh, no. let's see what's going on over here. The box contains a variety of papers, you rifle through them eagerly, hoping for a clue as to where you are or what might have caused this island to be barred. It's of no use, the papers crumble at your touch. Beneath the papers though, you find something interesting. It's a brass key, none the worse for wear for its long concealment, you take it. Right, let's see what's going on here. I think I've gotten everything in this area. Let's head back down. I don't know if I can use it as a weapon, but I'll try. Oh yeah, I forgot. If you 
craft more living beings. You probably know. You stumble a bit. You feel a bit woozy. It's not caused by hunger, though, but by the effects of the strange substance that is in the canister. The stuff didn't heal or revive you like you expected. It changed you. It's like it soaked into your skin and rewrote some of your very being, making you stronger. You take a minute to experiment. You extend your fingers and focus. Tiny trails of flame come out of them. You can work magic. You weren't able to before. Your training would not have reached that point for years. It is, ex it is exhilarating and, at the same time, terrifying. This is completely unknown magic, alien to you. It seems like it was made by your people, but you had no idea that they could do something so wonderful. You feel, deep within yourself, an eagerness to find more of the canisters and see what they can do. The canisters are your main way to gain new abilities. While on the aisle, if you have at least one level of battle magic, you can now cast a firebolt. Interesting. Rocks. Ah, healing potion. Those things come in handy too. Check the hits again. Inventory and items, blah 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 blah. to the north is locked, the lever inside the guard post will open it, but only if you find the key, the lever can be unlocked with the right key by having enough mechanic skill, or by using enough living tools on them. Oh, bloody hell, I guess I won't be needing a stick after all. A sword on the table. say, laying on this bed and playing video games is rather uncomfortable. What's been going on here? There'll be something around here, let's see. Thorns. I guess I won't be needing those either. Back up here. The lever. in there. This was probably the barracks for some guardians or agents. There isn't much left and the beds are ruined. It's starting to look like whoever was here left very quickly. A bunch of stuff was left behind. Mm. Yeah, I have one of those. I'm already wearing it. Ah, more s mm, javelins. Those also come in handy. What's that? 
creatures around here. Oh, it's not canister over there. Okay, there's nothing in there. Let me check the map again. You immediately recognize where you are now. It was an inn where visitors and travelers could stop for steaks, drinks, and sleep. The crumbling roasting pit still dominates the center of the room. You are getting confused. Why is there so much here? Most islands are burned because of experiments gone awry, and most such experiments are performed by very small groups in crude quarters far away from society. Yet you've seen warehouses, guard posts, and now an inn. At one point, a lot of shapers lived here. Now they're all gone. Why? We could have driven so many people off, and what took their place? So this this story is rather good. Like you have major towns going through abandoned cities. Fucking. I mean, it kind of wants you. It's 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 really mysterious, and it makes you wonder what's what else is going on. Like I said, I it's been a while since I played this game. Um. It's been well over 10 years, so I don't remember much. All I remember is the combat system and um, some of the controls. Either way, like, this is something I, I recommend. Oh, a belt. I recommend um, everyone play this game if you have the opportunity to. Belt, no, maybe the robe. Yeah, the robe is better than the cloak. The belt. Oh yeah, the belt goes right there. So. I'll just keep the cloak there. I don't know if I'll be needing it. All this is a rock. I don't think there's a way to get into that room over there. That's completely shut off. Oh, there's a lever. Right, something opened. That's empty. What's in that one? Ah, more healing pods. You know what that means. Whenever you're playing an RPG game and you get a bunch of healing items, you know something bad is going to happen. Let's save this. Check the map again. Let's go back to the... Oh no, why am I leaving? Oh no, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. My bad, my bad, my bad. I should be doing all that. Just see. Yeah, just spoons and stuff. Just let me play around this map a little bit more. Because I might be missing a few things. Looking to the north, you can see that you are not alone on this island. Though you were worried about horrible creatures and mutations, the, the first life you encounter is nowhere near so terrifying. It is a flock of orcs. The orc is a shaper creation. It's a slow, clumsy livestock animal, hardy and laden with meat. Shapers created them to stock areas, to stock areas unfriendly to non-created animals, such as apparently this one. You notice that these orcs have large tusks, probably added by the shapers to protect them from predators. Fortunately, they are likely to leave you alone if you leave them alone. Okay. Orcs. Orcs. Yeah, I'm not going to attack any of them. No use of doing all that. Not to be a vegetarian or anything like that, but still. Shaded area to the north is the zone barrier. When you walk onto it, you will leave this area and be able to choose where you would like to go next. And I want to make sure I have at least explored every nook and cranny of this area before I go someplace else. So 
that over there? To open this door, you need to unlock the lever with your mechanic skill 3. And I'll just pull the lever over there in the corner. Oh! There are 35 coins in this. Alright, pick the lock. It's in here. Icy crystal. I don't know what those things are. I don't know what the thorns do either. I think you can craft things with those. Yeah, more, th more thorns. What not? Yeah, just rubbish. Okay, it seems like I've explored every bit of this area. Let me just go in there and make sure there's no dark spots over there. Yep, I basically explored this entire area. Um, make sure I've explored over here too, because I want to make sure that every boundary is uncovered. Just to make sure that uh, I'm not missing anything. Weren't. Oh, there it is. Gemstone. Gosh, I'm almost running out of stuff in my inventory. Bloody hell, what's all this that over there? Yeah, I think I'm going to leave this area right now. Um, save. Save one more time. And then head on to the next area. Hmm. So this is the entire island. Hmm, interesting. Abandoned Vale. Let's see what's going on over there. And then travel. Oh boy. You immediately recognize this large building for what it is. This was a shaping hall. You knew there must be one on this island somewhere. Here the shapers on this island did their work, using magic and force of will to make creations, both established and experimental designs. If there was a cataclysm though, it didn't take place here. This building is undamaged. To the side you can see energizing pools, holes in which the ceiling which allow light to shine on them. Remarkably, despite their years of neglect, they have survived. The goo inside a pool is semi-living, plant life form, capable of drawing energy from the air and the sun. If you stand near a pool, you will be able to replenish your health or essence, depending on which pool you use. In the corners of the hall, you can see two glowing glass canisters. They wait there, ready to give you power. Click on the two books to read them. They will teach you useful things about essence and making creations. Hmm. Let's see. Creations for the beginning shaper. To survive on Susha Island, you will probably need to make creations to fight for you, especially if you are playing as a shaper. When you use the canisters on the left, you will learn to create a Fiora, a small fire-breathing lizard. Now, now these, I fucking love Fioras. I remember playing, playing with these uh, little lizards um, pretty much all the way out into the later portions of the game. That is if I still remember the later portions of the game. But they're really powerful. Plus, I like fire. No matter what RPG I'm playing, whether it be Pokemon or what, whatever, fire magic is what I like, and fire monsters are what I choose. To make a fire aura, you would need at least one level of fire shaping skill. If you don't have this and you want to make a fire aura, you would need to train in this skill when you have the next level gain. To make a creation, Press the creation button to the lower left. It has a worm on it. You will then spend some of your essence to create a fire aura and improve your skills. The more essence you spend on one fire aura skill, the less you would have to create more of them. You can create up to seven servants. You can't get the essence you spend back until the creation dies or you reabsorb it. Finally, it is a good idea to buy at least two levels of intelligence for your creations. If you do, you will be able to control them in combat. Otherwise, they will act on their own, 
and they may not always do what you want. If you started out as an agent, you might not have the ability to make a fire. To get it, select Improve Abilities in the inventory area, and buy one level of the fire shaping skill. Oh, I think I did well by choosing a shaper. Let's see. Where's that other book? I'm going to get the books before I... Uh, it looks like there's only one book. They said it was two books, but I don't see a second book. Uh, let me check the grab. Oh, nothing there. I have to go for ports anyway. Uh, let's see. Oh, there it is. Secrets of Essence. Essence is represented by the blue bar under your character's graphic in the roster. In the upper right corner of the screen, use Essence to make creations and cast some of the most... and cast some of the more powerful spells, like healing. When you spend Essence to casting spells, you get it back by returning to town or by approaching an Essence pool, like the one nearby. However, making creations reduces the maximum amount of essence you can have. If you have a total of 30 essence, for example, and you make one fire which costs 10 essence, then your new maximum is 20. You can't get the other 10 back until the fire dies or you absorb it. It is up to you whether to make a lot of weak creations, a few strong creations, save your essence for the spells, or a mix of the three. Forge makes all of these options viable. Hmm. Now time for me to open some canisters. Healed for 25. Create Viora by 1. What's this one over here? Increases heal by 1. Oh, a healing pod. In that one over there. Ah, dagger. What do I have in here? That's, is that a sword or a dagger? I don't know. That's also a dagger, so... Yeah, I'm just going to just stick with this one dagger. Um, matter of fact, I'm going to save this right now and continue this later. Alright, you guys, that's it for Gene Ford right now. Um, like I said, this, this game has at least 50 hours of gameplay, so this is going to be long if I continue to stream this. So let me know if you guys like this. Um, that's it for right now. Um, hope you guys have a good night. Stay metal. Hail Satan. And have a good one.